the western part of the island of Leyte, a village large enough to sustain a settlement of several families, was blessed with rich and fertile soils where the natives toiled over producing various bountiful harvests. This village was then called Ugmok. Even during this early civilization, this small yet productive village had a well-developed and lucrative system of living. When the Spanish explorers arrived, changes began to happen through the years. One of these changes was the conversion of the many natives into Christianity when the Jesuits arrived in May 1597. In 1605, however, Moro pirates from different tribal groups in Mindanao pillaged and harassed the humble Christian settlement. When the Jesuits went home in 1768, the Augustinians took over the missions in Leyte and Ugmok became a visita under the parish of Palompon for a span of 72 years. However, on December 21, 1850, Ugmok became a separate parish under Reverend Father Luciano Bibiano. When the coming of Spanish conquistadores as well as the migration of people from neighboring towns, the name Ormok was born from the original Ugmok. For a span of three decades during the end of the 19th century, commercial agriculture continued to expand in Leyte. Abaca or hemp was its main export in the 1870s. Ormok was a huge contributor in this trade. Through this period, a number of important infrastructures were built. The currently existing Puente de la Reina was built to help people cross to the shore of Candolong. Another bridge, which still exists to this day, the Tulay de Perdon, was built by Capital Municipal Segundo Esmero. During the late 1800s, Ormoc was also a hotbed of revolutionaries seeking independence from Spanish rule. The rise of Faustino Ablen, a fabled revolutionary leader, inspired locals to join the Pulahan movement. In a twist of events, Faustino's daughter Rosa later married a Spaniard, Don Felipe Larazabal. The Larazabal family would later become prominent in the growth of Ormoc after World War II. The golden age of Ormoc started in the 1920s, with the sugar industry started by the Aboites family. During this period, sugar was listed as one of the products enjoying privileges in the U.S. market and the shift from abaca to sugar began. The Ormoc Sugar Company or Osco Sugar Mill was built in Ipil in 1919. Ormoc City was a witness to the deadliest aerial and naval battles ever fought during World War II. The last stand of the Japanese invaders occurred in Ormoc and the war officially ended on December 10, 1944 when the invaders finally surrendered to the Allied forces. Although the damage was severe, the city was able to quickly recover amidst burning houses, phosphorus shells, and immense amounts of rubble and ruin. With this continuous progress, Ormoc was proclaimed a city on September 4, 1947 by the first president of the Republic of the Philippines, Manuel A. Rojas. Shortly after, by virtue of Presidential Proclamation No. 42, Ormoc was formally inaugurated as a city on October 20, 1947, and it seemed that Ormoc was on a steady rise. However, on November 5, 1991, Typhoon Uring spawned a flash flood ravaging the entire city and brought about massive destruction and death, claiming around 8,000 lost lives. Also appeared lost, but with the aid of several humanitarian organizations, Ormok struggled to get back up. The Japan International Cooperation Agency, or JICA, assisted the city in implementing a flood mitigation project, which would ultimately protect the city from another destructive flood while helping boost the local economy. The city was on the rise due to its strategic location as the gateway of Eastern Visayas, allowing for rapid financial and economic growth. Ormoc was also a vital contributor to overcoming the national power crisis in the mid-90s as it is the site of the world's second largest geothermal steam fields which paved the way for multinationals to create build-operate transfer schemes with the government. But the city's tribulations were far from over. On November 8, 2013, the city was not spared from nature's wrath as Super Typhoon Yolanda, Haiyan, ravaged the city. Again, the destruction was massive, but the Ormocanons remained silent and strong. The Ormocanons banded together while patiently waiting for outside help. Recovery was rapid and we showed the world that we are ever enduring and spirited even during dire and hard times. 
Just three years after the devastation, Ormoc City is displaying steady progress and stability. From a small town with dirt roads and cobbled streets in the 1940s, Ormoc is now an expanding concrete jungle and home to flourishing businesses and institutions. Feast or famine, it will thrive and prosper. Ormoc will forever be a city of beautiful people.